So you started in the cyber security and learned few things. Now you want to go to the next level. If you are eager to apply your learned skill on some real hands-on projects, then this video is for you. Hello everyone and welcome to SecureNet channel. We post videos on cyber security. Please motivate us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. We really appreciate it. So you might have understood that completing a course may not give you a real experience. You must practice your skills by working on cybersecurity projects. Working on these projects molds your skills to the real life environment and helps you gear up to be a part of the industry. You can always start from the beginner level projects and slowly transcend to advanced projects. Before we start, just a reminder that prerequisites of a cybersecurity professional would include coding skills, networking skills, and knowledge about operating system, and of course, knowledge of cybersecurity concepts and algorithms. By working on the projects which I'm about to tell, you will gain the experience on all these skills. And no, I'm not going to tell you to go to onehub.com, download the virtual machine and practice on it, or create a keylogger. These are the suggestions which are given to newcomers in the cybersecurity all the time and you might have already heard about them. Although both suggestions are really good and you must try them if you have, haven't already. So if you want to try Volnhub, my favorite virtual machines are Metasploitable and Mr. Robot. I'll provide a link of both of these into the description. I will also provide a keylogger GitHub repository address link in the description if you really want to work on that. But in this video, I want to talk about those projects which are implemented in almost every product of any organization. These are real world projects. You can build these projects into any language or you can use multiple language in one project. For example, you can use Python, Go, Ruby Rails, Java, JavaScript, or C Sharp. For cryptographic services, you can use free services provided by AWS, Azure, or Google. So let's start. The first project I want to talk about is creating a secure password policy. So you can build a small cybersecurity project, test the strength of your passwords according to OWASP standards. This project should enforce basic rules like minimum password length, complexity, avoiding parts of username or any public information, the inclusion of numerical and spatial characters and other ground rules. You can also think about providing more flexibility to the user rather than just enforcing all the rules. If you want to add more features, you can also implement use of paraphrases instead of a standard passwords. Then if you want to add some advanced features into it, you can also train your system with the machine learning algorithms. You can use data sets of passwords that were leaked in the past attacks and then feed into the system. The system then warns the current user when they enter any similar password. You can always get the hold of data sets from the internet to train your system. As you might have realized that this is a very common project because almost all the products have password module. Let's go to the second project which, which is implementing two-factor authentication. You can enhance the earlier project further and you can develop a user authentication portal providing sign up form and login logout functionality. You can implement identity management, authentication and authorization into this project. You can also play with the database management system to store some information and hence you can learn about SQL queries and you can test your application for SQL injection. Further into this project, you have opportunity to include things like multi-factor authentication biometric authentication, facial recognition, or you can use Google Authenticator to log in into your system. You can also then change your implementation and use standard solutions. For example, if you are using NGIC server, it has its own 
authentication module. Similarly, you will find several standard modules into Python or ASP.NET. The goal of this project is to see how things are implemented, how developers implement these kind of authentication and what could be the possible loophole into this, these systems and how you can use some vulnerabilities to evade these kind of implementation. Let's go to the third project which is encrypting sensitive data. So you can further try to encrypt the passwords which a user enters and store it. You can try to research how basically passwords are being stored. If you are using a standard solutions, you can search where the password is being stored, what form it is stored, what algorithms are being used to store this. You can build a simple web application to encrypt and decrypt text information that user keys in. You should make sure that you produce different outputs even if user gives the same input. Then you can write a decryptor and try to decrypt the information. Just like text, even images carry sensitive information and can be encrypted. You can add that feature as well. You can use encryption algorithms like AES, DES, RSA, logistic chaotic maps or even simple scan and ZOR based algorithms. Here you can try different algorithms, how they behave and try to use insecure algorithms and then whatever data is produced try to decrypt them try to brute force with this project you will learn really important concept of cybersecurity, which is cryptography you will learn about encryption decryption what algorithms are available which one is the secure algorithm what will be the impact if we do not use secure algorithm let's go to the fourth project which is developing a security awareness program so this is not an actual coding project but you can use microsoft word to develop a document you can write and establish security policies for an organization for example which are the critical systems what would be the frequency of the backup where the backup should be stored how the backup should should be encrypted you can write all these kind of informations uh, similarly uh, you can write about patch updates what systems are the candidate for patch update how frequently the patch should be updated who should update these kind of patches if something wrong happened with uh, updating the system how we can roll it back you can write about trainings so what mandatory training everyone should go through into the organization once they join you can write about trainings by different departments for example the hr department can be a candidate for pci dss training while a developer can be a candidate for secure coding training you can also write about phishing awareness how the employees would be given training for phishing and also how your system can can detect and stop the phishing attempts what kind of firewall rules should be used you can also write about threat intelligence what kind of from where the company will get threat intelligence what would be the benefit and uh, what would be the frequency of getting this kind of intelligence so this project sounds very simple but in reality organizations spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to prepare these kind of plan and implement them they also hire experts from outside who have decades of experience implementing these kind of policies now let's go to the fifth project which is building a personal firewall now it sounds like very complex project but it is not there are several open source software which you can use to create your own personal firewall some of them are pfSense, OpenSense or IPFire. These are quite a stable firewall solutions and have a handful of features. They have also commercial grade performance, timely updates and great community support. It is definitely achievable to build the best next generation firewall for home use combining one of these open source firewall, a fanless mini PC and a packet inspection module. If you don't have a new PC, you can also use the old computer or a virtual machine to prepare this firewall. Once you have created this firewall, you can learn about creating different rules into this firewall. For example, anyone who joins your network will not be able to open certain website. Or you can also block 
emails from certain websites some of the key features that are made available to the to these open source firewalls include application visibility and control drill down network visibility user based filtering and reports web security and cloud app controls and encrypted attacks protection you can try to use all these features and learn about them there is a lot of learning from this project which includes what kind of firewall rules are usually created you will also learn networking concepts what are different types of firewalls and what are their features and the idea is that once you have an in-depth experience about the firewall concepts and how the rules are created you can also then try to do a pen testing on your firewall setup and try to find out how to evade the firewalls the last and final project as a bonus i want to propose is create your own vpn this also sounds very nerdy but it is it is not same as uh, creating your own firewall you can use several open source softwares to create your own vpn and this project is not only important for learning but also as an ethical hacker many times you might want to use your own vpn as it gives better privacy than buying a commercial vpn solutions you can use softwares like open vpn or algo vpn to create your own vpn solution i'll provide a link of both of these into the description the learning from this project will be how to create your own virtual private server and different other privacy concepts thanks for watching if you learn something new please like and share this video don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you are looking for more free cybersecurity resources visit to our website securenetweb.com you will find several free resources like preparation guides flashcards for the certifications free courses and practice exams